Today we have another classic tale of the haves versus the have-nots and how power and wealth can pretty much get you whatever you want. And it's something that we already assumed was happening all the time, but the details within the story take things so much further that we could have than we could have ever expected. And although it's frustrating as hell, it's also hard not to laugh at some of the finer points within this whole thing. So instead of just wasting any more time, let's just bring you up to speed on this whole pay for play college scam news that recently broke invo involving Lori Lachlan, aka Aunt Becky from Full House, and Felicity Huffman of Desperate Housewives, whose husband is wrapped up in this, although he wasn't named for some reason, and that's William H. Macy, who I can only assume based on the way that Trump addresses people, is the owner of Macy's department store. <laughs> or William H. Shameless, because mm. that's the show he's on. Could be. Oh, and by the way, while researching this whole thing and skimming over the 200-page affidavit, we noticed a familiar name on the list of people charged. And uh, let's just say you should you should stick around for the whole video. Mm, yes. So literally this video, is it's up late today because, uh, well, when we found out about someone we know being implicated in this scheme, we just couldn't stop laughing for a whole hour. It was a real productive productivity killer. So yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, here's the whole story. On Tuesday of this week, the FBI... They charged around 50 people in a nationwide scam that allowed wealthy people to pay for their kids to get into the best colleges in the country. Uh, we, we already know what you're about to say. Yeah. Well, obviously this happens because of course it does. And yeah, you're right. Now, th this whole thing seems so obvious that even when we saw the news, it almost just felt like a non-story because, hey, we, we, along with many of you, just assumed that this shit has always been happening. Yeah. Now, what makes this story different, though, is the lengths that these people went to in order to secure entry into these schools and get what it, 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 it's all built around what is essentially a fake foundation, a nonprofit used to facilitate this whole thing. A quote unquote charity, if you will. Mm -hmm. Now, it's fair to say that we're not entirely sure how the legal way of bribing colleges to let your kids go to them is usually handled. But it seems like large donations made directly to those colleges is probably the way to go. Yeah. Very legal and very cool. Hey, heard you needed a, a new library. Men's bathroom. Yeah, well, or whatever. How about I give you the toilet money and you yeah. call that the Elliot Big Dick Toilet? Yes. Uh, now that could be legal or not. Like we said, we're not sure. Now there's apparently the front door and back door ways to get into college. The front door being getting good grades, getting good grades on your SATs. Meritocracy. A, 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 yes, you prove yourself worthy of entering the college. Now the back doorway is the thing that we just talked about where large donations are made, very large donations, and sometimes that can slip you in the back door. Plutocracy. Sure. Now this whole scam, it goes far beyond that. It, it's described by the people involved as the side door into college. Mm. And the details- you, you didn't know there was that many doors, did you? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of doors in this college. Wow. Uh, the details- I'm coming in through the sunroof. <laughs> uh, the details of the tactics used to gain access for these kids, they are hilarious, but also infuriating. Yeah. So first of all, the investigation launched by the FBI was actually codenamed Operation Varsity Blues. Mm. Lovely. Uh, and this scam, it was being investigated for over a year before any arrests or charges were made. And by the way, this investigation, they only stumbled upon this whole scam while investigating something else that they didn't clarify. Well, uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's like uh, these, these crime people, these people doing crimes. They bury it under other crimes. Well, a lot of them, they, you know, they're... Prolific. It's it's contagious, like measles. Anyway, according to the affidavit filed by Special Agent Laura Smith. Which still sounds cool to say. <laughs> of the Boston field office. Put down the diploma. Uh, according, according to her affidavit, the names submitted to the court were believed to have, quote, conspired with others to bribe college entrance exam administrators to facilitate cheating on college entrance exams. To bribe varsity coaches and administrators at elite universities to designate certain applicants as recruited athletes or as other favored candidates, thereby facilitating the applicant's admission to those universities, and to use the facade of a charitable organization to conceal the nature and source of the bribe payments. Ooh. They literally say the bribe payments. They're calling it out for what it is. I love it. And it just like you. The older I get, the more I love reading court documents. It is so uh, weird. It's people like, yeah, I, I knew <laughs> I fully embraced adulthood once I, I, th I think. Let it, me just peel right into this. It was like one of the Elon Musk documents or maybe it was before that, but like it was around then where I'm like, fuck, 
I really missed my calling here. They, th these lawyers and these uh, special investigators and all anyone involved in court cases, they really spice things up with uh, with all of their stuff in the court. It, it, it's wonderful. I, I, having worked in a law office at my first job, I know for a fact that that is true. It's yeah. a very boring, very boring. It's a very boring profession, and they will use any opportunity they can to have just a little bit of fun. And this affidavit at 200 pages is spicy. Mm -hmm. So the charitable organization that was used for this whole thing was called the Key Worldwide Foundation. And it was run by a man named Rick Singer, who after the, after the affidavit was filed, he sung, he <laughs> yeah. pled guilty to charges of racketeering, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice after it was revealed that his foundation had taken in around $25 million throughout the, the many clients they had in order to guarantee enrollment in top universities around the country. His words, his words in like the, uh, the transcripts from audio recordings, 800 families. Which, he could be bullshitting, he could be pumping those numbers up to get more clients. One but of those families could be in your town, in your boardroom. Or it could have been one of your bosses. We'll get to it. The amount of donations, oh sorry, bribes. Bribes, they're bribes. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of bribes ranged from anywhere between a few thousand dollars to upwards of six million dollars. And, and you just have to wonder how fucking stupid the kid that cost his parents six million dollars worth of bribes was to, to get that kid into college. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you could- Just give up. For six million dollars, you could start fine. your own college. What are you doing? No, just leave. You're an embarrassment, leave. Yeah. Go live somewhere else. Or, I mean, yeah, if you have six million dollars lying around for this, fucking buy an S&P 500 index fund and you will live off dividends well for the rest of your life. What the fuck are you doing? It's a pride thing. I guarantee you this is all pride. Oh, it absolutely yeah, is. Anyway. Although the amount of, like, the, the whole university pride thing is a very East Coast thing, and a large number of these people are LA people. And yeah. like most, I, I've lived here 15 years. I don't generally get the sense anyone gives a fuck where you like, what Ivy League place you went to school, but maybe I'm just not running the, the right circles. Yeah, well it seems like in this day and age with uh, how shitty everything is, it almost seems rude to be like, well, I, I graduated from Stanford. Yeah, I would like hide that. I would yeah, keep that a secret. Yeah, they, people I'm don't need to know. People. I know it. They don't need to know. My parents know. It, yeah. Anyways, I, I didn't graduate and I went to community college. Well, you're smart because I'm in debt. <laughs> Back to the story. <laughs> According to Deadspin, who did a great breakdown of the details included in this whole thing, quote, one prong of the scam required the parents to earn their kids extra time to take the ACT or SAT, often by having them diagnosed with a phony learning disability so that the test would be administered at a special location where CW1, and by the way, when we say CW1, we These mean- These are the child's names? Yeah, no, 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 this is the foundation. Oh, okay. CW1 is referred to as the foundation in the, all okay. these documents. So that the test would be administered at a special location where CW1 could bribe the proctor into altering the scores. Parents also, at CW1's direction, went about creating fake athletic profiles for their children, which would then allow college coaches and administrators who were in on the scheme to get their kids into schools as athletic re recruits. Yeah, that's a whole chain of shady people all scratching each other's backs. Yeah. And, and we were uh, talking about this before. There are so many links in this chain that how could it have gone on for as right. long as it did? It was bound to fail. The whole thing with scams and grifts is you want to have as few loose ends as possible. This had so many fucking loose yeah. ends. Like this had like fucking dudes at the SAT testing center making like $30,000 a year. Well, like, that's why they did the bribes. Is, right. But that person's also going to roll over the at the first sign of trouble. Yeah, this is also just kind of the beginning here because they said that there are people that there were 50 people named in this. Uh, they said there's going to be more. Yeah. And I guarantee you that as you go down that chain, people are going to flip on even more. So yeah. this Sunday at church, see who's sweating. Yeah. It's not summer yet. Shouldn't be sweating like that. Mm -mm. Is anyone called out sick at your big business? Anyway, the documents included here, which are readily available on the official Department of Justice website, my favorite website. <laughs> They are filled with email correspondence and audio transcripts that are a fucking gold mine of people <laughs> implicating themselves in increasingly hilarious ways and then getting real sad and desperate when they start to notice they may have done an oopsie. There's a big old tide shift in a lot of these transcripts where um, 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 um. <laughs> the people behind the Key Foundation thing, the charity organization, let everyone know that they're being audited. Yeah, you know how I said I could get your kid into college for a couple million and, you know, it was almost, almost surely gonna work out. The best well, part is, like, in a bunch of them, the, the, the guy, Richard Singer, I guess, Rick Singer, it, it, like, uh, it, many times it was like, well, 
you know how audits work there. <laughs> they go through a lot of the details. So um, he's basically like, it's like at look, least he let them know. He's like, you should take a vacation right now because yeah. you're not going to have one for a while. Look into offshore bank accounts. It's maybe buy some silver bars. I, I own a couple, by the way. If you want to get a shell company, this is a shell company. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. One parent named Bill McGlashan, the co-founder of STX Entertainment, whose list of films includes Hardcore Henry, Valerian, The City of a Thousand Plants, The Bye Bye Man, and The Happy Times Murders. I thought that was the Pee Pee Poo Poo Man. The Pee Pee Poo Poo Man. Don't say his name. <laughs> you're laughing now, but you won't laugh when you're dead. This guy, this film executive, uh, he probably takes the cake in the whole thing, because in order to get his son into USC or Stanford, he allowed the foundation to Photoshop his kid's face onto an actual athlete because the kid didn't actually play football and they thought it'd be easier to get him on a sports scholarship. Uh, but, you know, just, let's just read the fucking transcripts. Yeah. Oh my God. Because the high school your son attends does not have a football team, I'm gonna make him a kicker slash punter and they're gonna walk him through with football. And I'll get a picture and figure out how to Photoshop and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so on <Khan> Academy. <laughs> Linda.com. He says he's going to Photoshop it. So it looks like it. And the guy who runs the biggest kicking camp is a good friend. So we'll put a bunch of stuff about that on his profile, and we should be in pretty good shape to get that done. Now this continues. Stanford said no. Too tough. Grades too low. What an idiot. <laughs> Just don't want to make that an exception right now for him. I'm going to make him a kicker. Now, to which Bill McGlashan replies, he does have really strong legs. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll become a kicker. You never know. You could inspire him. You may actually turn him into something. I love it. <laughs> These fucking rich assholes have no faith in their children. You know what? Actually, he does have strong legs. Maybe we can make this work. Maybe my son was a kicker all along. Also, like, I don't know what's worse. The idea that the kids are in on it or the idea that the kids have no fucking clue that their parents are doing this to them. By the, so in a lot of the transcripts that were involved in this whole thing, Parents go out of their way and explicitly state that their kids will have no knowledge of this. So I- It's fucked up. I kind of feel- These kids are gonna hate their parents for the rest of their lives. Oh yeah, so I, I there's a shred of me that does feel bad. I don't- And also- Yeah, the, I, they're fine, but- <laughs> Okay, they had to know that they weren't smart enough to get into places like this, but- <laughs> I thought uh, it was special. Or maybe they are that dumb. But here's the thing. The worst part about this is that their parents' wealth got them into this situation, unbeknownst to them, mm -hmm. in most cases. And the worst part is, their parents are, have committed fraud and are going up on federal charges against the FBI. Right. So you would assume that, I don't know what's gonna happen to them at the schools, if they get kicked out or not. I would think they, I, I would feel like the actual student body of these schools that like, get the fuck out of works here. their asses off to actually get into a place like Yale oh, or Stanford. Like, why is this guy still here? I'm sure the school news, oh my God, I gotta find what the school, school newspapers newspaper. at all these schools because I'm sure they're having at it. So that's the thing. You get kicked out of school, your mom or dad's in jail. And they all their money got all, taken by the government. Yeah, the, the government is finding the shit out of them. Wow, thanks you know mom and dad. Yeah, wow. So I, I do that well, just this much. I feel bad. You know what? Uh, you know what's real useful when that happens? Bootstraps. Yeah. Seems There's like you should. Uh, Khan Academy probably has some courses on how to code. Pull your, yeah. Learn to code, kid. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. So they go on to talk about how he's gonna need a photo for this little Photoshop. Any photo of his son doing something athletic, <laughs> so he can make the Photoshop believable. But then McGlashkin replies with this totally self-aware and really fucked up comment. That kind of sums this whole thing up, saying, ha ha, okay, okay, let me look through what I have. Pretty funny. The way the world works these days is unbelievable. Oh, you don't say. You yeah, don't say. buddy, it is. So these types of schemes, they completely implicate the athletic associations mm. at each of these colleges, too. Mm. I love it. <laughs> they were in on it. In one scenario, USC took bribes for fake basketball players and for their water polo team. Yeah. Stanford took bribes to make people rowers. The whole thing is just so fucked up. And while it is fun to sit here and mock these rich idiots for doing all this, it shouldn't escape you that this is very fucked well, up. Well, I mean, like, we're long past college age. Yeah. I, I figure uh, some of you watching this are, are, a little, are a little closer to that part of your life. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you probably got rejected from some of the schools you wanted to go to. And um, I'm sorry to break this to you, but your spot may have been taken by someone who had absolutely no business being there. Who's a complete, paid for it. A complete fucking idiot. A complete idiot fucking idiot. Took your spot. Now, these rich kids, they were getting shuffled into colleges and taking up room 
where it's pretty fucking apparent that actual brilliant students who worked their asses off were most likely left in the dust at least multiple times. Literally, now throughout the court documents, over and over again, the discussion with these parents, they go into detail about how their kids are either too lazy or too dumb to have gotten into these schools on their own. It, it is sad, but it should make everyone very angry. Uh, the Deadline article, which you should read in full, it's, it's linked down in the description, it, it ends this whole thing on an even more anger-inducing note by showing off the tweets of Lori Loughlin's daughter, Olivia Jade, who only made it into USC thanks to a $500,000 bribe paid for by her mom. This, this girl was put through USC by her mom, Lori Loughlin, Aunt Becky. I believe she's still there, and she's a big influencer. She's very popular on Instagram. She's a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. um, and the comment sections on all of those profiles, they, Real were, good right now. they were pretty negative. Well, here, here's some tweets that she made while at school because of the bribes. USC student, here you go. I'm too tired. My eyes hurt, and I don't want to be at school. I hate school. Oh, my God. It's so hard to try in school when you don't care about anything you're learning. Legit, I'll take one hard test in school, and then I'll immediately text Lori Lachlan, her mom, telling her I want to be homeschooled. Lol. Lol. I'm trying so hard to focus and do my homework, but it's so hard. So, Je Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, all we can say is that not only are we just so goddamn happy that justice is finally being served for shit like this, but that all of the personal conversations between the parents are included in all of the documents because you should read them. It's just so slimy. It's so good that they're in there. And it's good to be able to show the general public how screwed up all this is and how the whole scam worked. It just aired it all out. This is literally, it, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. I know it. But, Elliot, we promised everyone something. We A little inside scoop? We told you that, you know, at the start of the episode, we, us, Internet Today, Ricky and Elliot, we actually know someone personally who is implicated and charged in this whole fiasco. And we weren't lying. Because while reading through the actual affidavit, right there on, I think, page four, when, well, if you skip His to... His section is like around 100. 186, yeah. to be exact, I believe. One name stuck out. Steven Sempervivo. Steven Sempervivo was actually one of the top executives at Machinima for years, while we were both working hard, down in the dirt, on ETC. I was living with four roommates when this guy was in charge of... Yeah, he, uh, I mean, I can only imagine what his salary was, but he was brought on as the president of the company. And he his, his entire job was like, hey, we need someone who's going to lay off half the work for us in the most brutal, like, sociopathic way possible. So and he five, fucking did it. Five months after he was brought in was, like, the first major machinima layoff. Yeah, it was very easy for him because... It was his first job in the entire entertainment industry. Seems a little bit odd to hire a the top executive at a company so. to uh, who has literally no experience in entertainment at all at a new media brand. But yeah, about a couple months after he gets hired, uh, they call everyone in and uh, they're just like, all right, half of you, go. you're fucking fired. And that was the first of many. Yeah. So here's the thing. Steven Sempervivo, my actual face-to-face -face conversations with him were very few and far between, but he was always there. Always lurking. looming, yeah. lurking. He would lurk by and like look in. Well, not a, not much of a talker, and you uh, you can that definitely comes through in his transcripts uh, that the FBI gathered uh, in his yes, in his yes, affidavit yes. because he is a marble mouthed mumbler when it comes to any shit hitting the fan. Having said all that, we would we I think we can both agree that we did not like this person at all. No, uh, he, he was like the fucking Grim Reaper. Yeah, uh, so. When I read his name in there, I immediately called Elliot. A text wouldn't do. <laughs> a text would not do for this. And we were just, it was, I was beside myself. Yeah. What a day. I read, um, I read so much. So, Elliot, why don't you explain his role in this? So, Steven Sempervivo, his son, uh, really, I don't, well, again, I don't know how much his son knew. But Steven Sempervivo really wanted his son to go to, was it Georgetown? Georgetown University. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, in order to do that, he a lot of these a lot of these scams were done by pretending that the kid was an athlete when they were in fact not. So Steven's kid, it was like uh, he played some tennis. Yeah, he's a he's a top he's a CIF star tennis player. The kid barely swing a racket, but uh, yeah, yeah. So they they uh, apparently it all it worked out for a while. And then when uh, when Rick Singer gets uh, 
once he starts getting audited, he's, he's letting all of his clients know, hey, just letting you know, just a heads up, probably nothing, but we might all go to jail. Uh, Semper Vivo and his wife, they, uh, th like, the transcript is hilarious. It's just like, we donated to, to, to the charity because you guys do good work. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I, 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 the thing you're talking about, I don't know, I don't really support that. Like, I no, I, I, I want to, if anyone's listening, I want to go on record that I, I didn't ask for that. Like, <laughs> if, you wanna, if you want to read what a panic attack looks like, <laughs> it's pretty great. It's fucking awesome. Uh, <laughs> so... I, 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 you know, I don't wish a lot of ill will on a lot of people, and I didn't ask for this. I didn't pull out my Steven Semper Vivo voodoo doll and start, uh... This guy fired, like, 80 people and bought a Maserati. Fuck him! Yeah, he did. <laughs> he drove, like, an old Jaguar when he started working there, and then after everyone got fired, pulled up in a Maserati. Yeah, fuck Weird. you, Steven. Evil flex, but okay. Yeah, no, uh, oh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, Here we go. At one point, he grew a, he grew a goatee that oh, somehow yeah. made him look even more, like, yeah, it devilish. Like, it was promoting. like South Park evil, where they have the evil characters with the goatee. <laughs> it, anyways, it was a joy to see this in there. Um, and, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I think the only thing that can make this entire story worse is the news that we're about to give you, which is, you know how we said it was a charity organization? So it turns out that uh, a lot of these, these parents, these good intentioned parents, if you want to call them that, maybe their intentions weren't so good after all because since this was a charity, these parents were deducting all of these contributions from their taxes. Yeah, so um, let's say you pay half a million dollars to get your kid into college. I mean, you'd have to make a pretty uh, obscene amount of money to owe half a million dollars on your taxes, so it's likely that most of these people just ended up paying no taxes at all yeah. in these years that they did this. While you are paying everything. are paying all of your taxes and being told that you're asking for a handout anytime you say, I don't want to die before I go to the hospital. Please don't let me let whatever, uh, my stomach hurts. I'm probably going to wait eight weeks well, before going to the hospital because it's too expensive. Why don't you grab a couple bootstraps and tie that stomach up. Yeah. A couple pop of stomach a few and uh, there you go. Go back to school. Uh, look, also, look, don't ask me for a handout. I gave half a million dollars to charity last year, buddy. Oh, you know they're so smug about it too. Ugh. Now, listen. Fuck you. That's the whole story. Well, yeah, there's pl there's going to be so much. Oh, this is going to keep going. There's going to be so much. Oh more. my god, I can't believe the old president of the company we worked at is now a is now a character. Is a character. Yes. Oh, I love it. Because he's going to have to go in front of the judge again. He's like, no, 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 oh no, no, my no, no, god. No. Sir, sir, just take a breath before speaking. <laughs> so get this man a doctor. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, sorry that the episode is late. We also it's also late because we got a new studio and we're filming it right now. Even though it doesn't look different, we have uh, we've been working on this all weekend and are continuing we to work on it. Painstakingly moved every piece, literally to make it look exactly uh, a like mile, it could. Uh, down the street. So uh, thank you, and uh, and I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone on Patreon that made moving into our own studio with no one else. Yeah, uh, moving, moving uh, costs money. It's very expensive. It's a lot of a lot of uh, hidden fees. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. had to buy a lawnmower. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so, hey, a little extra money on the weekends. We're gonna go around. <laughs> hey, sir, I see uh, the grass is looking a little long there. And it's electric. Hey, the these other guys they're charging you hundred bucks to mow your lawn. That's crazy. I bought this lawnmower for a hundred dollars. Yeah, give me. Uh, Say 45 bucks in a case of Also, I know a guy that can get your kid into college. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know a guy. I know a guy who knows a guy. Yeah, it's a long chain of people, and if a single one of them squeals the cops, it's all fucked, but I got a good feeling about it. <laughs> I got a good feeling. These are trustworthy people. Uh, anyways, we want to buy gaming PCs for the studio, so go to the Patreon, because we're out of money now. Uh, go to the, go to Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Uh, if you want to become a member, you can click the join button under the video. Thank you to the Patreon supporters. Uh, yeah, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever, uh, whatever it takes, uh, let's pay for the studio. Uh, thank you guys so much, uh, and we'll see you soon for Tech News Day. Uh, also, uh, uh, before we go, Wednesday, I don't know when you're watching this, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m., 5, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, uh, we're playing Division 2 with me, Elliot, Kale, and Spool. It's a real 
circa 2014. It's, it's the Semper Vivo years. ETC. Yeah. Hey, Semper oh, Vivo years. Yeah. Yeah, he brought us all together. More I'm going to name my custom character Steven Semper Vivo. <laughs> You're going to make him bald with a goatee? And I'm going to use cheat codes. <laughs> all right. No, they don't have those. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you again, uh, Patreon, YouTube member, blah, 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 all that. Watch our stream tomorrow. It's really important that you watch that. We love streaming. We want to do more of it. And uh, watch our recent episodes of Weekly Weird News and News Dump, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.